the ESA Earth Observation Program uh, today has three main lines of activities. Uh, the first one is the science missions. We call them the Earth Explorers. The Earth Explorer satellites are uh, geared towards uh, science uh, to answer burning questions of science. Uh, the second one is the Copernicus program where we build uh, the largest uh, earth observing system in the world by having uh, six families of uh, sentinels uh, um, uh, which we are uh, defining and developing and putting into orbit. 20 satellites and sentinels in the first round uh, but also to be renewed and to be uh, expanded with new capacity which we are uh, also developing together with the European Commission uh, to address new policy requirements like climate change, uh, uh, carbon dioxide monitoring, Arctic questions, uh, food security and so on. And the third one obviously is for metrology to continuously improve the quality of weather forecasts. So altogether we have 14 satellites in orbit, uh, 28 uh, in development, uh, which is quite a large portfolio and is uh, for ESA certainly the largest portfolio we, have, we ever had. Copernicus indeed is a game changer. The use of Earth observation data is the, the stream of data becoming available through Copernicus. Today we are producing every day 15 terabytes of data. On average every product is downloaded about 10 times, so 150 terabytes per data are delivered to users. We are uh, measuring continuously uh, and operationally uh, various parameters of the Earth system, the atmosphere, the oceans, the land, the cryosphere, uh, all put together to better understand and monitor the Earth system. And yes, Copernicus, I think is, uh, it is fair to say, is a major change in how Earth observation is being used. Also, because these data are free and open for everyone and therefore it really disrupts and uh, brings data to every single citizen uh, in the world uh, for a use which uh, they, can, uh, we can, they can have on, uh, based on this satellite data. I should say that we have been benefiting, we means the whole world, from the existence of Landsat data for the last 40 years. So now we have uh, Sentinel-2 within Copernicus, which is um, uh, similar in terms of uh, sensor uh, like Landsat with some variations, uh, there are different numbers of channels and the resolutions. Uh, but now I think, especially with the two Sentinels in orbit, uh, increase the coverage, uh, which is uh, provided by Landsat. So I think there we now really can, uh, would say, continue and complement uh, Landsat data. But it does not mean that one replaces the other or one is better than the other, because you need them both. And I think the combination of both has proven to be an extremely good uh, uh, application of it. In fact, uh, I'm working very closely with uh, NASA and USGS in combining uh, uh, Sentinel-2 data with Landsat data, cross-calibrating them so that users can use either of them, whatever satellite just happens to fly over. ESA is a public entity funded by governance or uh, taxpayers' money. The goal is not to make money by selling data. This is not our business case. Our goal is to provide a, a database, a, a data source, which people can use in order to create more business afterward. A lot of uh, economic value, economic benefit can be retrieved. The investment in Copernicus is multiplied by a factor of between 10 and 20 in terms of uh, feedback or return to the European economy. And therefore, I think it's, uh, it's a good investment.